know, there is a sense of community. And I think we need to we need to foster that. We need to nurture that. We need to grow that. And one of the ways we do that is when, you know, one of our own needs helps, we, we, we rally around them. Here we go. Kenny, one, one, and a two, and a three, and a go, go, go. All right. Hi, this is Eric Schrankers. Welcome to Control Talk. Now, your smart building is a video casting podcast for the week ending May 27th, 2018. This is episode 268, where we talk about all things smart controls and even smart people, which you'll find out a little bit later in the show. But hey, as always, we got the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only. Kenny Smyers, the smart control guy from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kenny, what is shaking Big Dog? Well, it's a big holiday uh, weekend, and uh, uh, things are going good here in Pittsburgh, Eric. We're in 85 degrees, sunny weather, but uh, I think it's going to shift a little bit to the rain and, and, and thunder tomorrow. But on Memorial Day tomorrow, we're going to have a great day, and we're looking forward to it. We have a picnic planned. And, Perfect. Uh, what about you? What's going on down in Atlanta? You know, don't know yet. Whatever my wife says is always what's going on down in Atlanta. So <laughs> we, 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 we might go to the lake. We might not. Uh, just sort of depends. But, you know, we're just playing it easy piece. But, that's, you know, we got two small kids. And, you know, with that, you sort of uh, are always sort of monitoring their moods and, and whatnot. But uh, it's, it, it's, it's a good time. And, listen, you know, uh, we're great. we got a great show planned. we got a fantastic guest coming on. So please stay tuned for our guests and definitely listen to the end of the interview. There's a, a very touching story. We want to make sure everybody has a chance to hear, but uh, Kenny, I want a special shout out to David Riffle for Belimo controls and Bobby white, David and, uh, and uh, Bobby were in town this week, helped me a bunch with a product that I want to talk about. And uh, this is something for our community out there. If you're not hearing about this, you will. It's sort of a new buzzword. It's called low Delta T. I think people are finally looking to the mechanical side of the chillers uh, and the boilers to start saving money. And if you think about what typically happens, Kenny, you know, uh, systems are designed based on degree days. So in other words, for our cooling, we're going to pick the hottest day of the year or a combination of the hottest days of the year. And the consulting engineer is going to, you know, size the chiller based on that and the piping and the pumps and everything else. And then he's probably, or she's probably going to add a, you know, at least another 25, 30% more to that because you always want to make sure you have enough. If you don't have enough, you could probably get let go. And then, uh, you know, same thing with So everybody oversizes the system and what typically happens with that Kenny is on the hottest day of the year, everything's fine, but up, but before that, everything is you're pumping, basically pumping water and you're not getting, yeah, it changes. So you're pumping 48 degree water out or 47 degree water out and you're getting 49 degree water out. Your systems are very, very inefficient. And, you know, people are now are starting to really get on board with the fact we got to solve that problem. And Belimo has a product called the Energy Valve that does just that. There are countless videos on control trends that talk about that. But I think once people sort of get their head wrapped around how that valve works, it's kind of a no brainer. And uh, Dave Riffle and Bobby White helped me at several clients this week. And uh, I think it's a product we're going to hear. I think it's a product whose time has come. Well, I agree uh, that several things that Lima does well is that, you know, the engineering, the in-depth deep dive engineering, we're going to be visiting their facility up there um, in Connecticut very soon. And uh, we know that uh, they've taken the valving industry and direct coupled actuary industry to new levels because they invest so heavily and understand it. And uh, I mean, they've made low delta T management an actual science. And 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 to put that into a cloud optimization, uh, a complete solution, the way they're doing it is uh, it's good for everybody. I mean, because uh, we we began a few years back with the MIT video where we had some of the top minds in the in the industry and and, and you know and then a very important location, very prominent location that says show me 
uh, you know, they generated six hundred thousand dollars in savings uh, in this university in a, in one year's right. time. So, I mean, you know, the biggest the push we see sometimes with the with these extraordinary important innovations that really do deliver results is that there's a, a, a concern that the people won't ever get their return on investment. Tell us a little bit about the, the feedback you got. Well, well, the return on investment, I mean, there are countless white papers and studies, so you're going to save the energy. I mean, just think about being able to go from a two degree or three degree uh, delta T to a 10 or 12 degree delta T. I mean, if you're in the industry, you can do the math on that. So the, the energy savings are there, but the biggest savings, okay, is the operational savings. And we start talking about that three thirty three hundred dollars $300 rule. Sure. And uh, I mean, because basically what happens when your delta T's off is, Certain coils get flooded, other coils don't get enough down the line, and it never balance, it doesn't balance out. So your tech, your your uh, technicians are getting calls too hot, too cold. But the Blimo energy valve is kind of Kenny like having a um, uh, you know a test and balance guy on every coil, just automatically seeing the sun changes, the temperature changes, let's adjust it, and it's it's all mechanical. So uh, basically, meaning that you know, once you set it up, and I, I had the, the experience this time for the first time. I'd sold nine of them, and we actually went out and uh, you know hooked the computer up and got to see how it was working. You can actually see the smarts on it, so it's standalone. You can actually hook into it. Mm -hmm. You've got I think thirteen months of data actually on the valve itself, or an unlimited amount if you take it to the cloud. But here's what was really, really cool because I'd sold the automation system there too. So Johnson FX system. And so we got to map the points over from the Bolimo energy valve into the back net points into the Johnson front end, the Jace. And let me tell you something, it was just easy peasy. The contractor almost fell over. It was so easy. He right. immediately started going, man, I ought to put these valves everywhere. Because if you think about what it is, every coil has got a control valve anyway. So now you gotta, you've, got a, you've got a great control valve that's going to control better than any control valve you've had because it's got the temperature sensors in there and a flow meter. Sure. What does that mean? Te two temperature supply and return and flow, that basically means you got BTUs. So now you can take that data out from a coil. You can, you can have it actually go right to that coil so you're controlling off the delta T and the exact flow that coil is optimized at so you're not overflowing it, which creates a bunch more flow in your system. Plus, you can take that data and you got a BTU system. You got all the data for your data analytics. So here's, a, here's another cool thing. You know, one of the things we went on, uh, you know, this goes back a while. They're thinking they're going to have to buy new chillers, right, because they don't have enough capacity in, in, in the hospital. Put one energy valve in, uh, you know, uh, on the front because it was sucking all the, all, all the water. It was basically pumping all the water, not allowing enough flow to go down. You're maintaining the exact same temperature in an operating room okay, with 30% of the GPM you were using before. Okay, so now all that flow goes downstream, and all of a sudden they realize, hey, we don't, we're not undersized. If anything, we're a little oversized. So, you know, I encourage you, check this energy valve out. Uh, go to your local Bolimo distributor, check control trends out. It is just, it's an awesome product. It is, and, uh, you know, I, we, we've, it's one of the, Control Trans product of the year, innovation product of the year, energy savings product of the year, because it really does deliver. And again, uh, I think the reason why things are are just not everybody's not using them is because you know the way things are presented and the way they're perceived but uh there's great tools now i i, I just happen to be on Belimo's website and I, and it says you know one solution for so many benefits but if you really and truly are interested go to our links to this Belimo energy site and see what's available they have videos for consulting engineers videos and, and powerpoints for contractors and distributors and end users it gives you uh you know that really incredibly assured feeling that you're making the step in the right direction. But uh, I can't see how these things aren't, you know, almost spec, uh, especially on large uh, consumers. You know, we're worried about, you know, the government's trying to put VFDs everywhere where you got people having motors, you know, over a certain size because you put a VFD on a motor, you save money. It, it saves us energy. It's good for everybody. Same thing with this energy valve. If you put it to work, I mean, it's just win, win, win. No, it's great, and Belimo's a great company. So shout out to those guys. And you know what they say, Kenny? If it sounds too good to be true, it must not be true unless it's the Belimo energy valve. So, nice. all right, brother, you got a couple right. of shout outs, right? Well, you know, I didn't know where you were going with us. Like, uh, uh, here we go. <laughs> you brought it back. Very well, nicely done. Thanks, uh, <clears throat> What we got, uh, just want to say congratulations uh, to several people uh, that have started new positions. We've got uh, Matt Trogue, 
He started a new position as social media account manager at BC Connected LLC. Uh, congratulate Ben Millard for starting a new position at sales engineer at OEM Control. And congratulate an old timer, Steve Jones, for starting a new position as marketing committee chair at Backnet International. Congratulations, Steve Jones. That's awesome. And then we got uh, one or two of the other uh, messages where we just, uh, we're trying to make people in our industry feel uh, that, you know, they're special and that they, uh, you know, they deserve a little bit of attention. So we're, we're looking forward to uh, taking anybody that has a birthday that wants to share it with us, anybody that gets a promotion, share it with us. But uh, we've got uh, new positions. Uh, we already hit that one. I lost my uh, setting here. I hit the wrong button. So, but uh, in, in continuation, uh, Anybody that works LinkedIn, uh, we're seeing LinkedIn becoming more and more of a tool to just pass on information. Uh, the one I was going to say was in thesis, uh, Eric Dunn, for instance, is starting a new working group, uh, Gateways from uh, Spain. They're coming in through the Antisis. He with Dwyer, didn't he? No, no, no. Uh, he was with um, Sierra. Uh, Sierra Monitor. Sierra Monitor, right. Okay. And then, uh, and then he, he took over. He's now North American sales director for Antesis. And uh, nice. it's, it's what that means is it's bringing the, the opportunity to all those really uh, incredible uh, sales that's going on with Daikin, Mitsubishi, Sanyo, since, you know, Toshiba, all the people that make the mini splits and, and the new technologies are out there. They're just hitting our, our North American market rampantly. Uh, they want to bring them into the building automation system. And Etisa sells that nice little integration box, whether it's KNX, whether it's Modbus, back that uh, you can buy a, a very simple tool that brings your equipment into your building automation system. Nice, nice. Well, Kenny, I tell you what, our guest is teed up. So let's bring him on and bring our first guest on. Sounds good. Kenny Smyers, tell us about our guest this week. Well, I'd love to. It's Josh Falpern from Siemens, and he's, uh, he's one of the top young guns in the business. Uh, we've known Josh for a long time, but he's so young, he doesn't look it's possible. But uh, Josh yeah. is with Siemens, and he's driving, driving the changes in Siemens, what we call the softer side of Siemens. He has an excellent handle on what we do as distributors, and he's putting it all together. So welcome to the show, Josh. Yeah, welcome, hey, Josh. Thank, thanks for having me, Eric. You looking good? Well, you yeah. too, brother. You too. Josh, you might know, is kind of known. Uh, he is the guy who is, we call him the Fedora man. So, Josh, I mean, rumor has it you never travel anyplace without your Fedora. I, it looked like you were missing something too there, Mr. Stromquist, but oh, I okay, did. Well, there we go. <laughs> it's Memorial Day weekend. Um, you got to kick off this in style. Yours, you look more uh, ready for the beach than I do. I look like I'm a uh, Gonna go uh, walk tough, be the tough guy walking on the streets of Chicago. Well, well you you do you, to. you're the tough guy with a heart, and I tell you what, mine's obviously not built for uh, headphones. So rumor number one is another <laughs> way. Yes, indeed, folks. Josh Felburn always travels with a fedora, and so uh, one of the cool things about Josh. Now, Josh, another rumor we're hearing wrinklings through the control trends community. That one of our favorite people of all time, a guy you know, Scott Hamilton actually moved over to disc tech because man you were hot and heavy on his heels and you were pushed him out a pusher that uh, he decided he was going to get out while to get most good answer to that room i can't uh, answer that question but uh you know you could probably believe the rumors on the streets uh, are true so <laughs> yeah there we cool. go there we go now i tell you what why you know as you know you you we're all three are big fans of uh scott hamilton and wishing him the very very best at disc tech and uh yeah. I tell you what, he's got some big shoes to fill, but you know what? The one thing I know about you, Josh, you got really big feet. So if anybody at Siemens is watching, Josh gets our vote. Yep. Yeah, no, I My appreciate vote. it, Eric. Yep, Eric and Ken, definitely appreciate it. Uh, you know, every director just keeps getting better looking, so uh, I'm going to have to uh, take it up another notch. Well, I got you. Well, well, Josh, I tell you, one of the things, you know, we've got history with you, Kenny and I both do, and, and uh, this is another reason why I think you might be great for, uh, you know, going upwards at Siemens is that you, I think you really have an understanding of distribution. I know that before you started calling on us and, you know, you work hand in glove with me and my team and you helped us develop the Siemens business in Atlanta and the, and the Florida market. Before that, you were working up in uh, the Northeast and you've worked with Kenny. Yeah. So uh, tell our control community a little bit about your background, how you got into business, sort of your sort of trek through distribution. And we'll start with that. And then we'll, we got some more questions after that. Yeah, I mean, long story short, you know, it, uh, I guess, uh, you know, they, I like to always say you get, it's better to be lucky than good. And uh, um, I got very, very, I was very fortunate about 10 years ago to get in the sales development program with Siemens, came on and um, 
came on very excited, very passionate, enthusiastic to learn about the industry. Had no idea the HVAC industry existed back then. And, um, you know, just I was very lucky to get a couple of really strong mentors that I would travel with them, go visit customers from resellers and contractors, mechanicals, uh, the controls, contractors, electrical, um, go visit the end users. Um, covering New York, New Jersey for three and a half years was really, really amazing, incredible because all we did was go in and in and out of all the mechanical rooms uh, throughout Manhattan. Learned a lot more about pneumatics than I thought I would ever in my entire life, but uh, you know it was uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, um, but you know it all came down to strong relationships, and uh, you know it's all a relationship business. And working with the wholesalers out there, Industrial Controls was a big one that I would work with in Twin Coast Supply in New York, New Jersey, Stromquist, and uh, you know now I've seen. I've got a really good coast-to-coast -coast, uh, view of uh, our, the whole industry and a lot of the CGNA distributors I've been in and out of their offices and met with their customers. Um, you know, it's really the resellers that, you know, you, are, you live in your markets day-to-day. -day. Us manufacturers live in beautiful Tampa, Florida, <laughs> and uh, around the uh, world in different areas. And, you know, you've got a uh, strong inside sales force and outside sales force that uh, – goes in and develops the long-term relationships that really make the difference. And, you know, it's in our industry is no different than any other industry. People buy from people that they know and they trust. Right. And, um, you know, I do see the evolution of, uh, of distribution getting more challenging, um, you know, with the technology, the way that it's evolving so quickly. Um, you know, iPhones came out less than what, 10 years ago. Um, to where we are today and uh, the different control technology um, innovations that are out there. Um, I think the biggest issue for a lot of wholesalers is just keeping up with those trends and with the uh, in well, let's, Yeah, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, Kenny and I, obviously, you know, we think we're right on that. I'm going to use a Kenny vocab word, vocab word here. Precipice of a massive change. Let's see it. Massive. Yeah, now massive was not the not the vocab where precipice was, but uh, that was good, Eric. That was yeah, a good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kenny. I appreciate it. Got to keep up with Kenny because he is like you got the mind like a steel trap, and man, he is a writer <laughs> and a vocab and a wordsmith. Yeah, right. He's an elephant. He's an elephant, a good elephant. Yeah, he is. He is. But uh, but you know we're seeing changes, and we see some distributors that see the change coming and have started to adapt it. We see others that uh, don't quite know what to do, and we see others that just are kind of you know. Hey man, we don't say anything. If business as usual, but uh, first of all, would you agree that the face of distribution is changing? And if so, what are you seeing distributors doing that you think is going to work and have them do well in the new environment? And uh, you know, you know, yeah, let's just start with that. Yeah, I mean, for you being in your shoes and knowing the landscape, uh, you know, the hard part's e-commerce. Um, you look at the Amazons of the world and. You know, the big HVAC uh, resellers that are, you know, they're not selling on any value or friendship or relationship. You know, they're strictly selling on price. So that's driving the margins down. And it's not just driving the margins down for you. It's driving them down for us also. Yeah. Because little do we know is sometimes we're getting uh, discount requests, for example, um, for you know, thousands of, you know, one SKU thinking it's a big project. And really it's, you know, just a... Uh, customer that is trying to a wholesaler that's trying to meet a price because the customer got quoted by ABC reseller and you know either way Siemens gets the order but you know we're blind to that sometimes since uh, you know you could have uh, you could be drop shipping product from anywhere around the country so um, yeah, well, I mean, no, no, hang on real quick. I well, think sure. that's a key piece. And I, I want to unpack that one a little bit because you bring up a great, great point. And, uh, you know, with the, uh, the, 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 the distributors, that, you know, they're just basically a phone, a warehouse, a computer system. And, you know, they just they have no overhead. They have no risk. They're basically just, you know, dropping prices. And I'm, I'm almost thinking and hoping that that's a bit of a fad. And, and I think more than enlightened manufacturers are starting to get a feel for that because, like you say, they wind up losing money with that. And, 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 and I wonder if one of the solutions might not be, Josh, is, uh, you know, typically I think, you know, most of us get discounts based on the volume we do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, and, and Kenny will tell you, I'll tell you, you know, for me to have 
trained engineers in house that can actually support customers. It's a, you know, it's at least a half a million dollars to get somebody Big investment, up, yeah. Yeah, up to speed and with insurance and everything else. And somebody that's just doing, you know, the, the sales stuff is diluting that. It hurts me. It hurts God and the manufacturers like you, but would that be a solution or how would you solve that as a manufacturer? What, how, how could you sort of solve that to level the playing field, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, the, the one thing we are working on and I, I can share just a little bit um, high level with you guys, uh, nothing's completely done yet, but you know, there's suggestions of minimum advertised pricing, uh, implementing that. We haven't done that in the industry before um, that. That'd be a big change because uh, you know, from Siemens, I know Johnson and Honeywell and others, you know, that's their decision, but I, we've heard and seen other companies, uh, depending on what the product line is, offer the minimum advertised uh, price. And I think you got to level the playing field. And you know, the customers that earn the business should be the ones that uh, you know work work as hard, harder or as hard as uh, you know the next business. So, well, I think too, uh, to to all your points and it's great feedback. Josh, but you know, first of all, I want I want to just say that uh, what we enjoy, what I enjoy uh, working with you over the years, is it it's kind of like a softer side of Siemens. In other words, this this understanding that you have that you're bringing to the forefront after working hand in hand with distribution, you know, from north, south, east, west, coast to coast, is that the challenges are are, are incredibly. Uh, I don't want to say disruptive or catastrophic, but they're forcing us to all to change. And, and, you know, for one of the things that I, I see that you guys are helping us do is provide solutions, managed solutions. We, we, we know that one of the big trends is that the hardware is going to continue to reduce because of the architectures for DDC systems and everything where all the field controllers and supervisory controllers are kind of merging into controllers that are now IP based and web enabled. So I think as Siemens is continuously helping us provide managed solutions to offset just the, the combat of fulfillment centers that are just taking commodity items and driving the price down to zero or, or profits down to zero. But, you know, I, I think some of the things that you're, 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 you're bringing to, to light are that Siemens is all about brand name recognition. Siemens is probably one of the most recognized brands in the world. It is in the top 30, I believe, but you can tell us that for sure if I'm, it's a bad uh, you know, statement there. I think it's but, 46. It changes every year, but. Right, but, but the important thing is, and I think where our futures are, are moving to, we're seeing the cheese move across the board into solutions versus product-centric businesses. This distribution would be aftermarket sales, used to be, you know, compete uh, for right. valve lines and, and direct coupled actuators. And now we're seeing fulfillment centers ch challenge us in those domains. But I think what you guys are doing, and I think you've led the charge on it, is us to get a little bit smarter with some of the solutions, package things together, take advantage of some of the Siemens offerings, and go beyond just a product-centric approach to the market. So uh, tell yeah. us about uh, what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I mean, and not to get too ahead of ourselves, but I think with one of the acquisitions that we uh, made last week with J2 Innovations, that's our step into the uh, into uh, being able to package um, everything for the control uh, CGNA uh, members out there, for example, you know that are already selling the Finn brand um, now owned by Siemens. You know, that's our first step into that realm and trying to put it all together um well, josh josh real quick real quick let's yeah. give our, our community that might not know who j2 is a little stable datum tell them about what j2 does and and like say so it's going to be a bundle but how would that affect your bundle but who is yeah j2? i mean and some of that's still to be determined you know the acquisition is only a week old j2 innovations based out of uh, chino california CEOs, Jason Briggs, they've been a long time uh, Siemens customer of ours, one of our top dealers in, in the entire country with other business control works. Um, and, you know, he came out with the idea about eight, nine years ago, trying to simplify. They really, their vision was, a, you know, change the way the industry is going and make it evolve uh, to make it simpler to program, simpler, just to overall increase the operational efficiencies from start to finish. And, um, you know, be able to execute projects and create beautiful, sexy graphics because that's what customers like. End of the day, that's the user experience and the user interface is the front end. Um, and that's simply what they what they did. You can, as you're programming your graphics, you can, um, programming your uh, project, your graphics are automatically populating. Um, and there's still a lot to be done. And now with J2 under the Siemens umbrella, um, they've got our backbone, our support. 
our engineers in place to uh, take them to the next level. A uh, bunch of California boys were just having fun. Now they're, uh, you know, with the real, with the, with the big boys and uh, with a lot of support that that's going to come with. Put your surfboard up, Jason Briggs. There's a new show. <laughs> yeah, you got to get, get, take those long lunches and get rid of them. He doesn't have any time for that. No. Yeah. Hey, Josh, real quick now, and you may or may not know the answers, and may, maybe to be too determined to be determined, but is that also going to be part of the branches offering? And I've got some consulting engineers around Atlanta that are asking that question already. Yeah, no, I definitely think it's, you know, when we purchased it, it was not just for our CPS division where, where you guys sit right now, but yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, our, uh, the product of the, of the future of where we're headed, uh, you know, for Siemens as a whole. And it's not sure. just in here in North America, it's global. It's yeah. uh it's well, going to huge global the, impact. The timing is extraordinary because uh, one of the premier features of J2 Innovations is tagging and, and Haystack. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we've got to see Haystack just, just go from, you know, working real hard to get acceptance and parity uh, with other protocols and acceptance now to taking the lead. Now, you know, Niagara 4, Tritium, uh, you know, Kevin Smith announced at their uh, summit 2018 that they were all in on project Haystack and Haystack tagging semantics. Siemens, by endorsing J2 Innovations, has given them another incredible boost because J2 yeah. Innovations features tagging. You know, they're, they're, that's what they're all about is to make things, the workflow easier and, and more Are unified. Yeah. And then taking advantage of querying and then accessing the data, finally really releasing the true value of data. You had to do that. You needed some interim, interim steps to be done, and tagging was one of them. So it's a great boost to the industry. I see it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help yeah, Siemens, one, but it's going to help us all. Right. 100%. And we do – Todd – I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, but yeah, Todd Lash, he is on the uh, you know, Project Haystack board. You know, He's our segment head for uh, systems room and automation. So, yeah, we – we definitely want to be a part of that community and uh, be right with uh, right with everybody as it as that evolves. Yep. Well, I tell you what, Josh. You know, again, you know, Kenny Coates says a kind or gentle or uh, you know Siemens, and I think that uh, I want to unpack that a little bit because I think you had a great deal of influence under this. But uh, you know, as we said earlier, Siemens is a global brand. They got many many different divisions, and up until just recently. It was like it was like little pieces or crumbs were sort of thrown to come through distribution, maybe sensors, maybe valves and actuators, but sort of uh, you know, you being part of this team, you guys have sort of expanded the portfolio of products that come through two-step distribution, mm -hmm. which obviously Kenny and I think is is really the route uh, to go. We think distributors with these changes can can be the most valuable, uh, more valuable in the chain than, than ever before. But mm -hmm. talk about, about some of the, the product changes that you brought through on sort of under your guidance and with your team. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it goes back when I started to be, when I was became after New York City, New Jersey, going back to your first question, um, became the Southeast Territory Manager. I love New York and uh, New Jersey. My wife hated it. So the moment that Florida opened up, I raised my hand and we moved down there. And the rest was history. We haven't moved, looked back, um, I think going on six years now. So. Um, you know, when I first met with you, I, I remember you coming into the meeting, Eric, and being like, what is Stevens? And, um, you're like, I could sell your valve. I could sell your actuator. Why, why should I? And, uh, you know, we did identify a gap out there that, uh, you know, if we were going to have true partners, uh, like you and Kenny, you know, both your businesses, uh, um, you know, there had to be something more in the more skin in the game for you guys to get involved with Siemens and, you know, Honeywell Johnson had already gone oh, or, or always gone through the two step model. So you guys didn't know anything different. Siemens, um, you know, we had a lot of folks like myself and uh, other folks on the team that knew that, uh, you know, two step would work in some markets, not all since we had had the direct strategy for so long. Um, but yeah, we definitely, we want to be able to bundle everything together because, you know, end of the day, you you need to you can't just provide bits or pieces to your customers to be successful. You got to provide the whole package, and uh, you know that's what we're looking at doing with uh, with certain customers throughout the country. Well, well I'll say, I, I, you know, just to that testament, I, I, we've been working with the you know the Talon uh, product line and and the uh, portfolio, and and I think the the way things line up occasionally is there's a good time for for implementation and product changes. Uh, you know, some of the things that Siemens done has done that are coming to fruition right now is a new product 
nine that really matters. In other words, you have a, a DXR controller that has the ability to right. do total room automation and bring lighting into the, the equation where we as, uh, you know, building automation uh, so, you know, providers and solution providers, we had to fight that silo. We couldn't get our, our customers very serious about taking building automation to the next level and inc incorporating lighting, for instance, you know, and some of the other things that really make the, the whole thing, uh, you know, real. In other words, if you're going to control energy, you have to have lighting in the equation. To think that you're energy efficient and your lights are on a separate network and they don't have true building automation control and they're not working with your HVAC equipment because now you have things like shading. You have things like, you know, optimal, uh, is it better to use the lighting inside or outside? You know, or is it the heat gain from a building? You know, do you want to shade that so you don't have to bring on the air conditioning? I mean, there's things that Siemens offers now in their controllers that are advancing technologies that are kind of new to the North American market, but already well established in Europe. But tell us a little bit about, you know, see, and that's the things that we're trying to bring out with Siemens is the Siemens has brought to the forefront a lot of new product technology, while some of the other people's products are getting a little long in the tooth, they're sunsetting some stuff and they're transitioning where the things that Siemens are bringing out right now, it's, it's going to be the future of Siemens for quite a while. And then I wanted to talk yeah. about new products. You got a couple well, of new yeah, products. Kenny, let him answer the first question because that was a great question. Let him yeah, answer no, the first I'll, question. And then I'll sure. yeah, I got three more. Know. Yeah, well, you will to do I one got, at a time. <laughs> nope. Kenny, I love the enthusiasm. I'm right there with you, buddy. Um, but, you know, as far as lighting controls, um, you know, we always had a lighting controls package and gamma lighting. It was, it was really, it was, I think we released it way too soon um, with the total room automation solution, the DXR, you know, Ethernet field controller, getting, going away from MSTP. We were in the forefront of that. And now all the other manufacturers are doing, uh, knowing that that's the way, you know, that they need to go for reliability and uh, speed. But, you know, the, another acquisition, you know, we're buying everybody left and right, it seems. You know, I've been here 10 years, and uh, we had a couple, you know, we'd buy one company this year, and then four year, years later, buy another one. Um, we did buy another company last week called Enlighted, and a uh, really big mammoth company with a great, uh, you know, lighting solution. Uh, they got into the business on the commercial uh, real estate side and um, IoT software. And, you know, their solution, I've got to learn a lot more about it. It's uh, brand new uh, to us. But, uh, you know, just their software alone is shown to save up to 85% on the lighting side. So you wow. take the in-lighted software on the lighting side. You take the uh, Siemens photo room automation on the HVAC side. Marry those two, have smart lighting. Um, you know, we do have another acquisition, which if I told you, I'd have to kill myself. And I don't want to do that. So, uh, Not yet. <laughs> I like my life, um, but you know, you'll see we've really, we're, Siemens is bringing everything together and, you know, because we want to be in the forefront and we want customers to want to buy from you and us together, um, you know, because we're providing that, you know, beautiful solution to, you know, to make um, each environment, each workspace efficient and comfortable. Awesome. Second well, question, Kenny. Well, the next thing, I, I, well, I, you know, I, I do, I get over enthusiastic because uh, I, I have one of those uh, impulsive thought processes, and if I don't say it quickly, I'll forget it. Uh, and, and the reason why I was excited is because I have recently been in several discussions where we're talking about specifications, and we're talking about the spec writer, this great tool that Siemens offers, uh, you know, specifying engineers that takes in some of the burden of all the you know, keeping track of all the new technologies, emerging it into a sensible specification that really brings the customer's best interest. You know, putting the customer first, the best thing to do is to make things integrated at, at the, every level possible so that you'll wind up with silos. And, that, and that's still today, 2018, we've been talking this for, you know, 15 years, 12 years, 10 years. Haven't seen a great deal of progress at the specification level, but now we're seeing these enlightened engineers really, truly working hard to find the spec that tells the story the best, that gives the user the best uh, you know, sensory environment inside of a room, inside, inside, so that everybody in there is as productive. That that the environment is not causing any kind of a you know back pushback on productivity and happiness. And in other words, so the real estate people are happy because they're maintaining their occupancies. The classrooms, the students are, are going into the eight scenario lighting environment. HVAC is taking on a new dimension where the first stage of heating and cooling is going to be lighting. If you're cold, you put on a, a red tone in the LED lights, LED lights, and, and then somebody says, "Oh man, I feel." 
episode already, you know, because it's all psychosomatic. It's all driven, you know, by so many things that now this technology is taking the pain out of it for us. So we don't have to write an algorithm. We've got the ability to just see a green leaf on a device display that says, hey, we are operating in total optimal operations with BAS, you know, the heating and ventilation, cooling, with the lighting, with the shading, and, and all that's being done by this, you know, algorithm and a controller that comes to you as one unit. So this now, is, our responsibility, I think, as a community is to bring those into the channels that get those specified, to make people aware of it. Different parts of the country are more alert or more enlightened than others. Different engineering communities uh, will mm. resist this kind of progression because it, it, it damages the relationship they've had with guys that they've been working with 20, 30 years. But we're seeing uh, this, the, the things that I saw recently with Siemens was that now this is almost, uh, you can't dispute this anymore. This isn't uh, you know, a question. The metrics are there. The proof's in the pudding. And the, so the carry-on question was, uh, as we get this network in there, we become more and more uh, understanding the importance of having having a good solid network, a secure network that's concerned with cybersecurity is, is to take everything else possible and add it to that network, like a particulate monitor, you know, and some of the other technologies that Siemens having a global reach brings in global products that have been developed at different speeds around the world, but brings them into our channel, our North American channel, mm -hmm. so that we can provide a, a backbone that gives the best control of HVAC, energy, lighting, and now indoor air quality, which leads to greater productivity. Right. So are you saying you want some uh, European products or you want to talk about the new products that we've got coming out? Yeah. You said, What's the question, Kenny? What's hey, the question, buddy? The question I, think, I, think is, you're, I think you're dead nuts on it. But ask Josh a question because I because you tell us about your new products. Josh. Or actually, actually, Josh, maybe you should just ask Kenny questions because I tell you what, I think if I was going to hire a marketing guy, <laughs> Kenny be the guy, man. I tell you what, talk about it. Hey, I think you know what, I'm still drinking coffee, so that's my apologies right there. <laughs> you don't have to apologize, man. You're right on it. You're no right more on. coffee, Kenny. No more coffee. But, 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 but Kenny, right. part, but, but part of the reason we're having trouble getting guests on the show is, man, you come up with ideas that they don't think of, and now uh, Josh, Josh, Josh is all over this. So ask Josh a question. Josh, yeah. tell us about some of the new products that integrate very seamlessly into our existing uh, building automation network. Nice, Kenny. Um, you know, besides you know what we've talked about already, I mean, we're we're all always trying to bring as many products over. Um, you know, we are going to you know somewhat global manufacturing uh, um, plan where a lot of stuff's coming out of Zug, Switzerland. So. Um, but, you know, new product, just for example, uh, one that's come out here in the last 30 days, uh, just changing the game a little bit on the uh, indoor air quality side is our uh, QPA and QPM um, sensor, room sensor and duct sensor. And um, as you know, and I know you're very passionate about the demand control ventilation um, strategy, but, you know, here with the QPA and QPM room sensor, instead of just worrying about carbon dioxide, which, you know, is an odorless uh, um, gas, you can't smell it. Now you're tying that, the VOCs, which has never, it's always been ignored. You're tying that into one sensor, one room, room sensor, duct sensor variant. And, um, you know, in the obviously VOCs, that's what gives off that really, really, really bad odor. That's what, you know, makes you want to leave your, uh, chemistry lab in college that and also putting together organic compounds on paper but uh, you know I do that's a story for another time uh, <laughs> but yeah you know so the, the those, those are two new sensors that are coming out um, you know or that's that have come out and it's sense it's going to sense the higher one so it's uh, you know that's more of a safety um, you know sensor where you know, you're doing the de demand control ventilation already, but now you're going to get um, the same benefit of the VOCs in that one uh, one sensor. One awesome. sensor, that's phenomenal. The output zero to ten, um, as before. So nothing's really changing. You're just getting that um, VOC add-on. So, so you're you're going to drive the cost down, right? Because obviously, if you got two sensors, two for the price of one, so to speak, right? Yeah. Yeah, combination sensors. So you have to get a two for. Well, hey, Josh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of feeling a, a game I like to play, a little game called Let's Make a Deal. So I put your, put your fedora on. I'll put mine on. Let's, let's, let's see if we can figure something out here. So what do you say, Josh, if we get um, – how, how should we do this? Should we get uh, – for our control trends community, you try one of these – we'll say, what, 20 of these sensors, right? You buy 20 sensors. Uh, I like to sell a lot, but, you know, let's – Let's make it a fun, uh, a little bit fun. Maybe a baker's dozen. 13. 
13, yeah. 13, a lucky number. So buy 13 sensors from your local Siemens distributor, right? Not an online vendor, but your Siemens, like full service brick and mortar distributor, preferably a CGNA member and super preferably either Kenny or me. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and let's say, so you do that. And uh, we'll, we'll put we'll put a, your email address in the show notes. So you send a copy of the invoice. Just tell your distributor that you're, you're part of the the, the 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 Fedora promotion. We'll call it the Josh yeah. Fedora promotion. And uh, and then if you if you win, we'll put all those names in the hat. We'll draw we'll draw a ticket. We'll we'll, we'll do it maybe in de, you know December or whatever, or maybe November. Winner winner gets two tickets to the Control Trends Awards plus, which will be in Atlanta this year. At the Fox Theater, it's going to be awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. Plus, there's an awesome, awesome, awesome hat store in Atlanta, and Josh and I will take you and Kenny to go fedora shopping. I'm, I am in. You're Siemens, in? Siemens is in, Josh Felpern's in, and uh, <laughs> I can't wait for Kenny to chase us around uh, as we go fedora shopping in Atlanta. That yeah, you know, awesome. no, I keep trying to get Kenny to get a fedora, but he goes, my hair's too perfect. Why would I put a hat on this <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that, guys. <laughs> you know, but but I, I tell you, it's exciting to to just to just talk what we're talking about, and that's what makes the um, control trends and the the uh, tracing down or tracking down the origins of trends and then following them to their their as they mature in our industry. We've done that several times. We've done that with uh, the smart valving that Siemens the PICV valves and and your and the additions you've made there, the, the BT300, the drive move that we've seen Siemens come into the, the drive, uh, you know, uh, VFD race. But uh, now we see the prolific, uh, you know, BT300 is one of the top selling drives and, and one of the easiest to install drives. What I like to see is when something gets adopted or, or initiates in the market through distribution or through whomever and then grows and actually takes hold and becomes a very successful product. So I, it always tickles me to see, uh, you know, we saw the advent of different technologies and, and it, it's always fun to work in an environment where new technology is adopted, the innovation is accepted and, and, and embraced and then part becomes part of our next next generation of products that we sell. So my, my, my concern is that if you, you latch on with somebody that doesn't like change and tries their darndest to hold on and fence in the market and, and make the market more difficult, uh, I just I, I have a sense that, you know, that well, I, I, th I think your point, Josh, it, 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 I think to Kenny's point, and Josh, I think you would agree with this. I think if you're a vendor, uh, because really and truly for a distributor to be effective now and in, in using their sphere of influence, they have to be, they have to have multiple brands, right? They really yeah. do because, you know, it's kind of like if, if, if you can go to somebody that handles seven brands of cars or five different brands of phones or whatever, you're going to do that because it gives you a better chance they can help guide you. And especially if you've got a local relationship, you're the trusted advisor. So if you're a vendor, you need to be easy to do business with. I mean, and I, I think, you know, vendors can be, what can we do to get more of your business? So two things. Number one You've got to get your marketing message very concise. So you've got to invest in marketing now more than anything else. Not marketing like, uh, you know, here's our product, here's the feature benefits, but marketing where it creates a buzz in the industry. So people are walking into my counter going, I saw the guy with the fedora and he's got that thermostat and there's a promotion going on. I want to buy some of those. Okay, yeah. so that's one. And then secondly, you just got, you got to be easy to be, do business as a vendor because again, like everybody else, we're scrambling to create a market and nobody has you know, the, the, the time to do a lot of the stuff we did before. MapPoint was sort of predatory, you know, one vendor, one territory. It was, it was a different game, but that shifted. So being easy to do business, agree or disagree? We agree. Perfect, perfect. Now, I want to cycle back around. I got a question for you guys, and this might just be the old guy and me talking, and we're getting back to this whole thing about, uh, you know, the online people that are just doing online sales. I'm sort of noticing a trend, at least where I'm at, and maybe it's just because I want to see it, where – I'm wondering whether more and more people are now supporting their local folks. I mean, because now you, you got to have a website. People got to be able to order online. But I think yeah. all things being equal or close to equal, I'm finding that more people are coming back to me and going, hey, you know, you don't have to be as low as, you know, that Swiss company or whatever because I don't get support there. But, uh, but you know, you got to be closer. But, but even when I go to places, I've got them a way to go in places. Because I like to support local business. And maybe that's just the old guy me talking. What do you guys think? Do you guys do that or you think it's just me? Uh, I agree and disagree because it just depends. I mean, there are 
there are some folks that you know have that heart, the same heart that you have, that you know want to support local businesses. I live here in Palm Harbor, Florida. Um, if I can go to a local restaurant instead of giving myself my money to a chain, even though it might be a franchisee owner, you know, I'm still going to go to a local restaurant over over a chain um, with the fam. But uh, yeah, I mean. Amazon is just making it too easy, you know, and I, I, I would love to say, you know, more and more, uh, I'd love to say more and more people are going to stick with the local businesses. You know, they're going to go where the, you know, where they know they, where they know and they trust, but, and I just get here the horror stories, you know, with the stuff that gets up to me or the, you know, this guy was, you know, huge university in Florida, um, been a branch customer for x amount of years and you know we can't even you know sell it you know this guy's selling it online for better than our cost and i'm like well you guys it, you know are the, you know owned by siemens it can't be below your cost and they show me the uh quote i'm like wow how, how are they you know selling it for that low um you know once those folks get in the habit you know those buyers at big universities hospitals um property management firms once they you know, get the taste of that low price once online, then they're going to keep Googling, you know, an SKD 6DU and wherever the cheapest one is, you're going to get a drop ship right to them. And, uh, um, you know, yeah, but, but again, but, but, I hear the worst case scenario. So I don't know if that's right. the minority. No, 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 no I, I think there's a lot of that, but I think that's where the distributors got to be a bit of depth because the first time they have a problem with that and they call you up, it's like, Hey, if you bought this from us, all this is included that engineer that cost me $300,000 to train and, and, and support can come out and help you with this, but you're going to have to pay for it. But if you buy it from me, you're not. The, you know, Eric, to, to get to your, your, the crux of your issue, I, both answers are correct. In other words, there's different products that require different levels of, of support. And, and God only knows that the name commodity, the connotation of commodity we've seen, you know, Commodity mean just thermostats, and then it went to motors and to direct coupled actuators to valving, and and so I think the the 360 that's coming around is the commodity items aren't where you're going to make your margin anymore. Like, like we know with about many services are going to be 95 percent, and hardware is going to be five percent. So I think what we're doing and what you're doing, Eric, and 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 you talk about it all the time. I don't know if you recognize it as well. Is you're spending more time in those solution sides of products so that you're not you guys got guys that can have people out with everything from udc's vfds and right. this is where commodity stops and real support begins you know right so so what i do and what I, what we tell our people is if you got to go shop like i dealt with a purchasing agent and he's rated he's his his annual uh, evaluation is based on how much money he saved his organization and how he bent vendors arms behind their backs and, and won two percent this year three percent that year because his goals are contrary to ours so if he's going to take a, a parts list and expect you to cross-reference a whole bunch of stuff or give him the 1000 2000 generation you know and what you need to do that and and that's where you know the technical expertise of a distributor has to be you know has to be put into an encryption of, of that protects that vendor's efforts. And, and, and so that person can't go on Google and just simply shop by, by, right. by part number. So the part number game, you know, we, we basically don't even try to play in that game. Anymore. Right. But, but, but to your point, these purchasing agents that are being, being built on, you know, and I completely get their deal. They're screwing it up for everybody else. Cause like you say, any, any but they don't care. No, but they, they're not, they're going to start caring when they can't get that cro list cross reference because nobody's going to do it because the, the, the distributors that are just online aren't going to be able to do it. And them. that's already happening. That's what I meant about the 360. Yeah. That's right. already yeah. happening yeah. because you know what? Uh, it's easy to, to find a replacement for a valve, but all of a sudden if that valve is from 1973, right. and I know that that dimension, that face-to-face -face dimension changed and he simply takes the recommended cross reference in the word, and I emphasize the word recommended because you already know that if the guy's working with you, he's, he, he should get the benefit that that's not going to be a, an exact face-to-face -face dimension change out. However, if you go with this other valve, who's very clever, this manufacturer built a line to be able to do those, uh, you know, those change outs. And you have to change brands to get that face-to-face -face dimension. And there's many cases like that where the, the collective knowledge of the, you know, the, the channel of distribution will have its place. And, and going well, back to what Ed Merwin said about filtering stuff, I mean, right. these guys can't, they can't handle the volume of, of, of technology and change. Uh, all they want to do is make their lives as easy as possible. 
And like you always said, you want to be so reliable that they simply give that to you as a distributor. Well, the, the, yeah, the other thing too, and so I think this is a great conversation. Thanks for indulging me with this because I, I think it's an important topic because it's true for contractors. It's true for all of us because everybody's squeezing because they think that's what they need to do to be profitable. And to me, that's penny wise, pound foolish. So I think this, this internet problem gets solved uh, in many ways. It won't completely go away, but I think if you're a distributor, for example, you better have be able have the ability to for people to order online. I mean, Kenny, you are able to do it. I'm able to do it too. Now, what I train, what we train our salespeople to say, Josh, is we say, if somebody says, "Hey, can you beat so and so's price?" First words of our mouth is, "Hey, do you want the lowest price or the lowest cost?" Because I can give you either or, but I cannot give you both at the same time, and neither can anybody else. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, do you price shop when you have to have a vasectomy? Because I know a guy that will give you, he's going to have the best price on a vasectomy of anybody on the planet, but he's going to use a hammer and a nail. It's going to be painful as hell, but he'll get the job done. So price doesn't always matter, but sometimes it does. Yeah. So, and I've had customers say, so look, here's the deal. If you want the lowest price, I'm including technical support in my offering. Now, if, if you, you know, we can back the tech support out. If you need tech support, you can agree to pay for it at X amount of dollars. You probably won't because there's Siemens valves are bulletproof, okay? That's one. Two, you know, warranties covered. That's a cost for me to handle the warranty and so on and so forth. Again, we can agree that we'll, I can lower my price. We can agree to take that out. You know, warehousing, the inventory. If you don't need inventory, you don't need it rushed right away, we can take that out. I can order it on another order. We can get it to you in a couple of weeks. And last but not least, I mean, obviously what I'm getting paid to do is act like a bank with so many people. If you pay me before order the product, I promise you I have the lowest price every day of the week. But my point being for a distributor to try to match online only with no services pricing, okay, and do all the other services they're doing is a fool's errand. So you have to almost do functional pricing with that, which is sort of what I was alluding to earlier on, Josh, from a manufacturer standpoint, the way you sort of do that is, hey, if you're just going to be an online only distributor, that's fine. You can still buy the product from us because you feel a need and you've got a great website. But if you want to get a better discount, but if you're going to have engineers on staff to do tech support, you're going to warehouse and you can do all this other stuff that full service distributors do, then you're going to have to add those things too to get the same price that your full service distributors are getting. And see, this yeah. is where I think a lot of I think where it's got to change is volume cannot drive discount. I think functionality has to. Yeah, no, because it does start with price. Uh, well, quality of the product, pricing, product, and support. Um, it's not all about volume. It's about value. And I think that's kind of what we've talked about here today. Is, um, you know, don't just look at the big number. You know, that was something that, you know, a lot of my predecessors, we'd always focus on the big number and, I'm sure you guys do in your businesses, you know, that big number, that's all that matters, but it, it isn't, you know, it's the value that those other numbers are bringing in and uh, other, they provide you with other opportunities to grow uh, right. you know, one another's businesses. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Josh, I would say that, you know, you're playing a longer term, you're playing the long game versus the short game. And there's some companies are forced to yeah. play quarter to quarter, you know, whatever it takes you to get the numbers for quarters, because maybe, you know, they're wall street companies or whatever. And, and I think, you know, what Kenny's saying is it seems like you guys are playing a longer term game. Yeah. So, you know, you're still, we're all trying to be profitable and, and the emphasis for me has shifted from growth to profitability. And, and I think, because yeah, I want to play the game for a long time. So. But hey, you know, speaking of that, buddy, we've got just an awesome, awesome community. We're coming up on Memorial Day, and uh, you know, you know, in Kenny, you know, with the Control Trends Awards, one of the things we say is that you know, it's a great group of people. We might change teams and we compete like hell, but at the end of the day, I, I say the Control Trends or the Controls community, our community, made up of all the companies, all the contractors, all the distributors, some of the greatest people in the world, right? You know, yeah. and, and and I think that. Uh, there's a lot to be said. I think we come together when, when, when times are hard. And, and, and Josh, you know, it's Memorial Day. I, I just want to take a second if you're willing to share with the control to this community. Because, I mean, you, know, you had some, some sort of very tragic happen, somebody you love very much. And, and I'd like to see if we could get the control to this community to help out here a little bit. So yeah. tell us about what's going on, if you don't mind. All right. I'm going to hold it together. But, yeah, no, I appreciate you mentioning that, Eric. Yeah, a couple, two years ago, April 2016, we were at the Newport uh, Beach uh, CGNA show. Um, and tragically, uh, my sister, uh, Sarah, my twin sister, Sarah Felperin, was uh, injured, fractured her skull, um, became paralyzed on the right side of her body. Um, you know, it just, 
you know, you always hear stories like this happen to uh, other people and, you know, feel, you know, so deep for them. And, you know, you're like, oh, it's never going to happen to our family. We're fine. We're, you know, rock stars. Everybody's doing great. Everybody's healthy. And, uh, you know, April 2016, April 20, uh, April 20, 2016, uh, you know, our life changed forever. And, uh, you know, Sarah, very passionate person, um, you know, very simple. We are twins. We don't look alike, thank goodness. But uh, for her, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, we uh, we it's been a really, really struggle for the last two years. You know, Sarah's been through uh, nineteen surgeries. Um, she had countless infections. There was a lot of times we thought uh, you know she was going to pass away. Um, tough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I thought, uh, you know, it was, it was just fighting through those, uh, times, but, uh, you know, right now she's, you know, she's got a lot of help. She's living with my dad in South Florida with her 10 year old daughter. And, um, you know, it was pretty cool. We, uh, just this past weekend, myself, John Pickens and Todd Lash did the, uh, half Ironman in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we raised money for Sarah, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, the story was picked up by Siemens. Um, also, Jim Heyman reached out to me, saw, you know, that what we we're doing on LinkedIn and, uh, you know, on his own just came and asked if he could share with all the CGNA members. And, um, you know, right now we're doing a fundraiser to get Sarah stem cell therapy. Uh, she did have an appointment just uh, two days ago um, where they're testing the electricity in her legs to ensure that it would work. And, you know, the only thing she wants to do and we'll share the link on the GoFundMe page for everyone to view it and see the whole story. Um, but yeah, her, her goal is to walk again. You know, she's a young, a young lady and with a 10 year old daughter and she just wants to be able to, you know, stand. We, I told her, you know, it's just like starting over. We want her to be able to crawl, walk and run again. And, uh, of course, Sarah wants to just start doing CrossFit again, but one yeah. thing at a time. So. One thing at a time, for sure. And, and I think the thing is, the stem cell is not really covered under insurance now, so you guys are trying to raise money to, to help with this, right? Yeah, so you know, we've got the GoFundMe account uh, opened. Uh, you know, we've raised $8,900 so far, and you know, definitely special thanks to Jim Heyman, Sid, Sandy uh, Mingus from CGNA, uh, Dave Hansen, Steve Bergman, Andre from uh, Tower Equipment out east, and of course, you guys, Kenny and Eric, for donating to Sarah. You know, deeply, she, she you know, very moved for seeing everybody coming together and contributing to her cause. Um, you know, we, we do want to try to raise twenty thousand dollars to, uh, you know, help pay for the uh, stem cell, stem cell therapy and then all the ongoing treatment. Um, it hasn't, needless to say, it hasn't been easy for my father, who, uh, you know, in his sixties was living in a retirement community, ready to enjoy, you know, the, the, the final quarter of his life. And now he's uh, raising my sister and my, uh, and her daughter again. So um, we need to get her out of the, out of his house and into her own home again. And I know, you know, uh, if this all works, uh, she can, she can have a second shot. Awesome. Yeah. From what I'm hearing, the stem cells just doing amazing things now. So I'm, I'm thinking real positive about that. And, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers with her. Kenny, I think we're going to put the link to the go. If, with your permission, Josh, can we add the link uh, to, to the, uh, the fund me thing? To, that you? would, yeah, that would truly be amazing. Little, Thank you. Yeah. Well, listen, I think, Kenny, we got to play a little bit of let's make a deal too. Let's say uh, anybody in our community that contributes uh, $500 or more, we'll do another drawing. We'll get two tickets to the control trends awards and we'll take you for door shopping too. Okay. Gladly. Is that okay with you. Were you good with that? Yep. So just on the GoFundMe pages, the way they can put in the comments, uh, control trends, and we'll know we'll put those guys' names in the hat too, or girls in the hat, and uh, and we'll yeah. do another drawing. We'll yeah. take them to the control trends. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll, we got to make this happen as a community. I think is is critical, and I think you know part of what Kenny did with the control trends awards was you know there is a sense of community, and I think we need to we need to foster that, we need to nurture that, we need to grow that, and one of the ways we do that is when. You know, one of our own needs helps. We, we we rally around them. So, uh, uh, you know, I ask the control trends community to to help as much as you can. Yeah, thank you, Eric and Kenny.
You All bet. Right. All right, Josh. Listen, mm-hmm. Scott Hamilton got a break because you, instead of been out kicking his tail, and 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 right now you've been on our show. So, uh, Scott, you get back to work because we're gonna let Josh Josh go now. He's gonna start hustling. Memorial Day weekend. He's still working. He's moving, he's shucking, he's jiving, he's making it happen. <laughs> so, uh, Josh, man, all the best to you, and God bless Sarah. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. Uh, have a great weekend, great holiday weekend. Thank you. you too, brother. All right, you Thank too. You. All right, man, great stuff from Josh Felburn. You know, Kenny, we were sort of talking a little bit about, uh, you know, the Internet thing, and I want to talk one more thing about it because, you know, there's a thing that happened to me the other day. You know, I'm, I'm a big camera shooter, and I shoot film, right? So, first of all, you know, film is making a resurgence, and it's like the hipsters and all that. So, you know, I, I'm kind of wondering whether Amazon's going to want to not be in such a cool thing anymore, but more of a sort of a necessity. But, but I'll tell you a story. So, you know, I always send my film off to get it developed. So, somebody says, well, hey, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a place here in Atlanta that develops film. So, I said, well, I'll support local. I drive out there. It's not that far. I walk in. And there are three or four photographers that are sitting around. And, man, you know, they got film cameras. So I start talking to them. And then I find out that there's this huge film community in Atlanta. And this other guy's got a podcast. So I start talking to him about that. I drop my film off. The owner comes out, get to know him. So he's able to personally help me. And, uh, you know, my point being, there's this community. I listen to this guy's podcast. And he's talking about one of the guys on the podcast is uh, an instructor, a a film guy that teaches at uh, the Atlanta Institute, Art Institute. And then he tells me about this thing called the Atlanta Photographer Studio, which basically is a, a nonprofit, but they got dark rooms, and they teach classes and all. So I sign up for that. And lo and behold, there's a film class, and who's teaching it but this guy that I said I'd love to go do a class with. So my point being, you're not necessarily going to get that in an online community. Those are things when you support your local community, I think magic can happen. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking just like film has made a huge comeback how analog records are making a comeback uh, with the younger people are driving this not the people our age the younger people are i'm i'm kind of wondering if 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 we're not going to see a shift back to where you know amazon's never going away of course and online's never going away but where you see more more room for the bricks and mortar people to play well yeah and, and i think it like you said with each generation there's going to be a different uh, you know a, a different uh, style, a different type of music, a different type of art, a different appreciation. Uh, you know, there's going to be people that uh, want to be totally connected and totally social media fied to now people are backing off. Uh, we heard last week that IOT hit its first, uh, you know, watermark, high watermark, where all of a sudden nobody wants any more to do with IOTs, you know, the way, I mean, IOT is never going to go away and so you're going to get more, uh, you know, extensive and, 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 and more, you know, everywhere, every, all, every, every single application, every single data point is still going to continue to be developed, but it's not going to be the main talk of the town. People want to just have it done. They don't want to talk about it. They're IOT out, whatever you, good word to say. They do. So we're seeing people like for Silicon Valley saying, you know, IOT has, you know, you know, really changed our world, but, you know, enough is enough, you know, until it actually makes a difference. They don't want to make it the, yeah. the feature. Uh, so Right, right. And people are tired of talking about it. Just wait and see, right? And, so, and, so the, so yeah. I, I agree with you. So, so what happens is like, uh, you know, the writer's clubs, you know, you talk about photography. Uh, I, I see another, another resurgence of books all yes. of a sudden. I, you know, yes. I, I mean, I had, uh, I went through some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the electronic versions of books, you know, and uh, I got a kick out of it as a novelty, but it went through. I still prefer a book, a hardback book or a paperback book over electronic. I'll do both or from traveling or whatever because I enjoy reading and I enjoy writing. But we're seeing now, too, uh, back when I was, uh, you know, 94, whatever, it used to be writer's group, you know, to your ca- camera effect. And, and they used to meet at libraries, like the public libraries. Yeah. You know? And then uh, I, I, I spent a lot of time in libraries for one reason. It used to be a place to go to be quiet, you know, a loud household or whatever, or, you know, where I needed to concentrate, I, I could rely on going to the library and they had, you know, several sections that would be just absolute quiet and, you know, students would go there, tutors would go into one section, whatever. And it was a kind of a neat little thing to see this kind of, a, you know, underground, you know, or whatever you want to call it, grassroots, you know, that would never give up its sanctuary, you know, that they'd love literature, whatever, and relied on the library to provide that. And then it went away. I would go to the library and there was nobody there. I was yeah. shocked. I'd go to a library in these places that used to be crammed and packed with anything from tutors, giving students lessons to people that just, you know, were reading to retirees on the newspaper sections going through each magazine. And it was like, you know, all of a sudden the library lost its flair. Well, I went the other, and, and you can rent videos and CDs and everything music wise and whatever. So it's just a, 
it's basically free. You know, so if you if you don't like to buy things, you're just going to use them and give them back. Library is your best oh, yeah, friend for that. Yeah. Now, guess what happened? I go in there and I couldn't believe how many young people, not older oh, people, not my generation, yeah, yeah. but young kids. It was like this was the new place for them yeah. to hang out quietly. They could associate yeah. without any, you know, just, you know, showery or refrenery or, you know, you know, display of, you know, gadgets or whatever. Or, you know, so, you know, back when we were young, we used to go to McDonald's or whatever. I'm just saying. So I thought it couldn't be that they would use Cycle the library yeah. Yeah. as a default place to meet that was cool. But, it, you know, and. No, I, yeah, I think I, 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 th I think it's coming back around, and, and you know, as you know, my role at Stromquist, you know, Rob Allen's running the day-to-day -day stuff, so I'm going out now and, and trying to develop new business, and you know, being on the road again instead of managing salespeople, actually getting out and doing the sales. What I'm realizing more than anything else is somebody's got to go sell it. They've got to go sell it. You got to go see somebody. You got to see the problem. You got to sell it. And like you were saying with Josh, I mean, you protect yourself. The, the buyers, the purchasing agents that are trying to get people like me to give them all the information, you know, if they're, if they're going to turn around and just screw you on it, you know, you're not going to get that. But, but my point being from a vendor's perspective, you got to protect the people that are making your market. And, and uh, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking good things are going to happen. And, and we got a couple of post ups. So let, let's hit them and let, let's go. Let's go. Go party because it's Memorial Day coming up. I, I agree with you. Well, the first uh, post up was that, you know, the uh, new Niagara uh, four dot four software from Honeywell Webs. And, you know, uh, that's the, it's always exciting uh, to see that you have, uh, you know, the constant upgrades and constant features added to, uh, you know, they have that software maintenance agreement, which a lot of people really don't fully understand how potent it is, how important it is. You know, uh, you don't think twice about upgrading your windows and paying whatever fees are associated with stuff like that. But, uh, you know, some of the people misunderstand the importance of a software maintenance agreement and the issues that we keep hearing and when we're going to go to RealCom, I become here in, in two weeks and cybersecurity is the lead card on interest. People are going out there to get, you know, not just, you know, acclimated or understand the current versions of it, but what steps do you take to, you know, defend yourself and defend your networks and defend your organization against these, these, relentless attacks these and they're spy bots you know it's not even real people it's just programs going out there looking for easy ways to get into a network when they do they, they hit you with some kind of ransomware or whatever so the, the most important thing is your passwords the second most important thing is your update so you need to always take that opportunity no matter how uh, inconvenient it might appear initially you should get used to it so that's not such an ordeal up Update your softwares, maintain your software maintenance agreements, and protect your network. And you've got, you know, about 50% of your first lines of defense are, are, are taken care of. All right, next up we have Mr. Bill Duckelberger. Oh, that, now I feel better about Bill, our uh, outlaw Blue Ridge Technologies. He explains the unified lighting control at the 2018 Niagara Summit. And I, I'll tell you what, I, I, just every time I go with Bill, I, I, or we interview him and we go see him uh, at one of the shows. Uh, we just learned something new about lighting because he keeps advancing it. He keeps making it easier. But, you know, in a nutshell, uh, Bill does a great job, great video uh, where you have one network, one service provider, one front end, and you've got lighting control. Congratulations to Bill, man, one of my favorite people in the industry. Kenny, what we have up next, man, that, that beer is just getting cold. It's out there, man. I'm anticipating it. You don't oh, even yeah. drink beer. Who are you trying to kill? You're the old fashioned. No. Uh, what, yeah, old fashioned. No. Old or fashion. Manhattan. I don't no. know. You no. don't even drink. Who are you trying to kill? Um, the, the next guy up is again, uh, you know, we, we've had a pretty good run here on, on keeping track of innovation. And, and the industry is so large and it comes from out of, you know, a thousand points. And one of the guys that does one of the best jobs in our industry and, and is the source of information and filtering is Ken St. Clair. So this, this next post was basically, uh, you, you put up, uh, uh, you know, the link to his uh, podcast. That it, was, uh, it says, so Ken St. Saint, Ken St. Clair on Digital Mindfulness podcast and uh, we had him on episode 267 where we talked about you know what the changes are and how he's taking something that's impersonal uh, like like a building automation system and he's personalizing it he's making making the, it a human yeah so so in order to make people happier in buildings you know to become digitally mindful so that's that's kind of like a what do you mean digitally mindful that's like business ethics you know it's a, it's a contradiction yeah, it's kind of like skinny fat you know yeah so so it's like an know, oxymoron so if you're digital and, and you think I just use a vocab word oxymoron, oxymoron i got it okay I just, just a second one man yeah. 
you were you were on the precipice uh, earlier in the show, the start yeah. of the show. Remember, you were moving. You were Jeff nothing. Brown. Nothing to June about me today. <laughs> you wrote him down. Could it? You cheated. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, it, it's a lot of fun. He he worked with this guy named Lawrence uh, Ampolo, uh, and and so he's a doctor, I believe. Uh, of, and, and so what happens now is Ken St. Clair's uh, automated buildings editorials and his posts are being caught up globally. This particular, uh, he's going to the Helsinki, uh, Finland meeting uh, where he's going to really and truly be featured on his, all the work he's done to, to help soften and, and re transform our business. So he thinks we can recreate ourselves by taking all this technology, IOT and putting a human touch to it. High touch, you know, high, high feeling, high touch, to this high tech that we're going to achieve something. We're going to actually create for the next generation of building occupants, uh, a true interface, a really gracious interface that takes their smart technology that they're accustomed to and, and connect it to the building automation systems to really make it a more productive environment. And so he's done a lot of frontier work and it's just a, a continuation of it. So you think Ken's more like Sigmund Freud Sinclair or Dr. Spock Sinclair? You know, I'd say both. Uh, it, both, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, in some cases, what he does is he explains the psychology of it, literally, because yeah, yeah. there were some things that Ken was, he was grappling with some pretty heavy duty, uh, you know, yeah. ideas, you know, uh, you know, the digital transformation, you know, digital twins, uh, he was taking the stuff and he and Therese were, were really taking some pretty, you know, I would say lofty concepts and he was making them understandable for the layman of our he industry. Really good at it. I, you know, I think we should stick with Notre Dame uh, Sinclair because he is, you, you want to know what's going to be happening. You just listen to him and Jim Young and you kind of get a pretty, you know, we've been following both those guys long enough to know that uh, when they say something's getting ready to happen, it's getting ready to happen. Well, to, 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 to Ken's, uh, you know, his ability to do that, he's been in this business almost 50 years, and he's seen the comings and goings of technology that were rock solid. You know, nobody ever thought pneumatics was going to go away or that, uh, re, you know, relay logic was going to go away. But he started a company, and his attitude was, you know, comfort control. His attitude back in the day when everybody's talking about, you know, full in the users and full in the occupants, you know, because we need to maintain our clutches on, on energy. Because I, I know that's how we were, were introduced to the business. We sold placebic uh, thermostats. We had a fake thermostat put on the wall just to give some, some people some turn left, turn right, you know, and they go back and sit down thinking, ha, ah, I just turned the heating on, huh? You know, and then we laugh and say, no, you didn't because that doesn't even connect it. And if you did, most you ever raised it was two degrees this way or two degrees that way, you know, and, and I always had, you know, was wondering about that. I mean, we actually had to sit down one time and glue rain stops onto the back of a thermostat, <laughs> you know, take the cover off and put in yeah. these flat. It was actually sent to us. We had little stops and we took little things of glue and we put a rain stop here and a rain stop here so that they could not turn the, the set point beyond that physical obstruction. And, and that, I mean, that's how serious we were about this. And then you now know, you know what we used to do, we used to do the modulating sweater. <laughs> I just give you a sweater. Yeah, you light, light, heavy, light, light, put medium, and heavy. Yeah, put a sweater on. Put a jacket on. Well, uh, yeah. So now we're going the completely. Uh, and you know, didn't, we didn't you, make tell, a, didn't you tell me? Speaking of that, you know, sort of cycling back to one of our favorite people. Didn't you tell me our girl Lindsay Baker wound up uh, someplace? She was with Comfy, which is what made me think of it because Comfy had the app that. I'm too hot. I'm too cold. We've talked about that a lot well, on the show. Well, there was a clarification, and we uh, we might, what's that called when you when you do a, a reprint a, or a retraction. Do a uh, well, it wasn't a retraction. It was a correction. What happened was, I, I almost fell over dead when I heard this, that uh, you know, they had had $70 million was invested in that comfy and that they, they had run the course and they couldn't make it work. So they basically uh, you know, changed the lineup. Uh, so she is now, uh, let's see, I got the, it coming up. She, Lindsay, of course, uh, she's head of sustainability and well-being. Oh, that's right. We, uh, we works. We were Lindsay. Right. Please, we want to see. We miss you, especially Kenny. So let's let's definitely. Well, come I, on the show. Tell us what you're up to. Well, uh, I've interviewed I was, her a couple of times. Oh well, I was on a couple of the uh, real com, the Ibicon panels. Yeah, and yeah. you know she she's super smart super and super. Smart. And but the thing was, as as uh, the funding didn't go to waste. I mean, they might not have made a dime on Comfy, but they educated our whole world at that expense. And it could come back and be, you know, company could be very successful. But I think they started up going up a straight. Not without, not without Lindsay Baker. Well, she did all the hard work. I mean, yeah, she I educated us. No, no, the fact that Lindsay, forget about the $70 million, those, those VC investors. I watch Silicon Valley. I know what goes on. Those v, VC investors 
having Lindsay leave, that was the biggest mistake they made, man. She was the first one to start delivering tacos with drones. I mean, this woman's brilliant. So, you know, companies, until they get Lindsay back, it's all gone. But WeWorks, that's where you want to be. Wherever Lindsay is is where you want to be. Lindsay, we want you on the show. Get hold of well, it. Well, like she says, catalyzing at the cutting edge of healthy and sustainable buildings and communities. From research to nonprofit work, from startups to corporates, I work wherever I can have a large-scale impact, carrying a special touch for human-centered building operations and design. So, I mean, that sums she it up. She sounds like she's Ken Sinclair's digital twin. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, 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 I get it. Profound respect for him because I tell you what, uh, back when we didn't know what the heck we were talking about with this, you know, with, with the uh, comfy where, you know, I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm yeah. good, you know, you know, we didn't understand the impact. And, and these people brought us by. They took us, yeah, yeah. you know, under their wing, they explained the concept, and we, we watched it. And in fact, we, we, they had a product, and you actually did some couple quotes on it. And, and the initial offering didn't solve some of the major challenges that cost you know that, that pushed was, back the hardest it was a great concept but it just in theory it was just impractical to implement it but it's great concept and i think somebody should pick up on that and call it uh, maybe we should get an app kenny and call it really comfy and have it Cramp, a, call it crampy we we call this guy crampy now when he's too cold he starts bitching or complaining and moaning and we call him crampy now no, really comfy really comfy. all right buddy what do we have up next big dog we have EasyIO update. EasyIO FW series controllers and FS32 controllers now communicate with MQTT protocol. And what is MTT protocol, Eric? I might have an answer for us. It is MQ telemetry transport. Telemetry transport is a published, subscribed, extremely simple and lightweight messaging protocol designed for, for constraint devices and low bandwidth. High latency or unreliable networks. The design principles are to minimize network bandwidth and device resource requirements whilst also attempting to ensure reliability and some degree of assurance of delivery. So we're seeing another step forward uh, in terms of, of producing the controllers that are leading the league in, in technology with the core quad core processing and just extremely, you know, you know, just amazing technology put inside of a, you know, FS32 now has the ability to communicate with the latest uh, MQTT protocol, which is going to become, uh, you know, the, the driving protocol for, for, pro for information transport. With it, with Dude, so, I tell you what, they're, was, they're just ahead of the game, aren't they? I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, when you, when you, when I hear this now, I'm kind of going, okay, whatever. But then I think what, the thought that flashed in my head was when they were telling us all this other stuff that they've done that we, we thought they were whatever and it's come to fruition. So these guys, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they got some strategic plans, but uh, the, the main thing about this uh, MQTT protocol is that it's the ideal protocol for the emerging machine to machine internet things, world of connected devices. So this isn't for our benefit. This is for the ability for, you know, those point to points, you know, without, human intervention just working yeah, well, artificial intelligence right right so, and, and all that stuff and also it, it's mobile first so this is a mobile first application where bandwidth and battery power are at a premium but there was some other information that was in that newsletter and that is they've opened two new easy io offices in the uk uh and then the uh, folks there in um in amsterdam or netherlands uh not amsterdam they get mad when you say amsterdam because that's that's not where they're from uh, Johan Chakorad is from, oh, I got exactly. it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, it's, uh, they have training coming up here, so I can tell you exactly. It's Gamhert, the Netherlands, so G-M-E-R-T, Netherlands. Uh, and so uh, EZO is launching a whole bunch of stuff. They've got the training out there, relevant solutions. They're going to have a barbecued salt, uh, a barbecued salt like City, Utah, and that's June 8th. Uh, they've got, uh, they were at the R A R B S show, uh, the uh, it's Australia's uh, international HVACNR, so the equivalent of RHR show. They hosted over 350 exhibitors and over 8,000 visitors. So, uh, just the global nature. Uh, what I'm trying to emphasize here is how, at the same time, they are active in UK, Netherlands, Australia, and now in the United States. We've got uh, our friends at the M and M Controls are hosting training the 12th and 13th of June. And also they're going to be in Nashville, Tennessee at Control Co. And in Canada, 12th and 13th of September, they're going to have a CPT and F-Series training in Toronto at North York, Canada at Yorkland Controls. So, All right. Well, good stuff, Kenny. What do we have up next, brother? Well, Mark, that was it. Uh, we have the That's it. Yeah, Memorial Day, baby. Memorial time, baby. I know. I know. It's uh, 
we're, we're looking forward to, you know, it's a nice relaxing day. Keep up the weather here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And, um, for sure. Tell those uh, kids that, that uh, Uncle Ken's keeping an eye on them to behave and give Anna and Eric a break. You know? Yeah, hey. there you go, brother. Well, listen, man, that's another great week at Control Talk. Now your smart buildings, video cast, and podcast. Man, we appreciate you tuning in. Hey, if you got some friends, tell them about us. If they're not listening to us, if you got some enemies, tell them about us too. Just tell somebody about us because uh, Ken and I uh, really are trying to grow the community. But we appreciate our guest, Josh Old Felborn, this week. Josh, good things to you and your family. Have a great Memorial Day uh, on Monday. And if you listen to us on Tuesday, hopefully you're not in jail like me and Kenny, but have a great, uh, great week. In any case, remember, be bold. What do I say? Be bold, be in control, be, be relevant. relevant, and take a picture of somebody. Somebody. Indeed, Eric. You love. Indeed, Kenny Smyers. All right, brother. Have a great day. Yeah, we're doing it. Shaky ground